government or war building or nation building is what they would deem masculine. <coughs> it's that sense of rationality that they would criticize. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. The alternative to these things, and that they would say that that masculinity is the reason why war happens. It's not that men kill people. It's that there is this uh, sense of masculinity that pushes people or compels people or constructs people to go to war, to feel like they have to have deterrence, to feel like they have to posture their nuclear weapons. So the government <coughs> argument would not necessarily link to that argument. Okay. Yeah? Does the gender ideology and not the... Uh, like, yeah. Yes. Does everyone understand when I say gender v. sex, the difference between those two things? What is what is sex? What is the sex of a person? Like, the it's the biological portions that make up a male and a female. Gender <coughs> are the characteristics of femininity and masculinity. Yeah. So, and then I think an overarching answer to most of these international relations criticisms is realism. Right? You hear this all the uh, mainly because these constructivist criticisms say the way that the world is now is fundamentally or epistemologically flawed. And that instead we should have a reason, a change, a fundamental alteration of the way in which international relations between countries operate. And realism is what we're in now. What is realism? Yeah? Louder? Because it's based black in their best interest. Yes. And it's most reductionist sense, and I think the way that it's deployed most of the time is based, is states will always act in their own self-interest. Meaning that if they need to go to war, they're going to go to war. If they want to build up the nuclear weapons, they're going to build up the nuclear weapons. Because for them, it's all, it's all about the preservation of the nation state. What can we do to secure that nation state? To make sure that international relations be raised stable. Does that make sense? And this is like people go through like semester long classes on realism, but that is like the most reductionist, easiest way to explain it. And so the argument that's the point of debate most times is that violence is inevitable in a world without realism. <coughs> realism creates stability between countries. Right? Deterrence is the perfect example of realism. Because it's not actually a building up of nuclear weapons, it is literally mutually assured destruction. If you attack me, I will attack you, thus we will not attack each other. Questions so far, or questions you've thought about the Nova about the K? Yeah. Yeah. Realism is the argument that nation states will act in their own self interest. They're egotistical, they're driven for competition, they're driven for success. Power. Yes? Does realism still like, apply if like, the leader of a nation state is acting in self interest? Like, I don't know what you mean. Do you have an example? Like uh, Kim Jong Il. When he does something for himself, but not like, supposedly for the, the country. Uh, if it like, would determine the government's like policies or standings, so probably in that instance, yes. Yeah. Okay. I mean, if he did some, if he took an action like <coughs> launched or tested another nuclear weapon, right? that would be an indication of the country's action. That's probably more of a question of like the foundation of how the government works. Does that make sense? But yeah, probably. Okay. Uh, those are kind of the main international relations <coughs> criticisms. Are there other ones that people have heard of? Yeah. You were talking about feminism. I've heard like on the military topic, there was the third world femi-RK. It was talking about how in the third world, I can pull it up. Yeah, no, I know what it is. I don't think that would necessarily be a topic for the space topic. Um, but the way that the third world argument works is, it's kind of like the essential claim that women in the West, like, women in the West, uh, like American women, here's the example that is to say. So, when we were talking about evading Iraq, uh, President Bush said, we have to do this because women are being uh, oppressed, they're being subjugated, they're wearing this thing called the veil or the hijab, and so it's so imperialist and 
uh, violent to tell these women that they have to cover themselves up, right? And so a bunch of feminists jumped on this bandwagon and they were like, yeah, they are being subjugated. Let's go invade them, right? Third world feminism would say that that is a, a system of understanding that does not fit <coughs> cultural differences. That to women in Iraq, the veil is seen as a sense of honor. It is seen as a way of covering up not only their clothes, but their hair, so that men talk to them, their face. Not necessarily their looks, their beauty, their clothes, their material possessions, right? And so third world feminism would say that the way in which the West, or the first world, the United States most specifically, views the rest of the world, necessarily, they don't have the same understandings or universal truths that we do, right? So what we understand as modesty or liberation is giving women makeup, but for women in Afghanistan and Iraq, it's wearing the veil. Does that make sense? Yes? Um, how do you think, like, the you have to this topic? Uh, the international relations case, all the links to me are functionally the same. Like, I can take my security file with all the links and put it in my FEMIR file and it'll do the same thing. Because all that's a question of is the way in which you construct the world. Because the way constructivist theory really is simplified to we have found a difference in the world that we do not like. And that difference has to be eradicated. That is the simplistic notion of constructivism. There's a grand narrative like U.S. hegemony or power or imperialism. They say X state exists in the world. Femininity, I don't know, threats terrorists, and that that itself poses a threat to us. Thus, we have to eradicate it. That's why, like, terrorist discourse, we construct them in ways of, like, they're barbaric, they're backwards, right? We otherize that is the term. And that that otherization that happens allows us to justify violence on them. Yes? Okay, back to the... <coughs> Go ahead. Um, back to the realism. Yes. You were talking about like violence and that realism. Yes. And then you said that the realism it was stopping because of deterrence. Oh, no, there was no label. I, I said deterrence is an example of realism. Oh, okay. <coughs> it's not an actual policy, it's a posture. It's like a mutually assured destruction. Mm -hmm. Right, so those to me are like the generic, simplistic, 101K, just like impact theory thing, right? Yeah? Probably like links to session oriented. Right, so those are like the simplistic ones that most of the time I think most of you have debated. What are some other cases besides those you've debated? Has there been a case that you debated that you're just like, I do not understand a single word that's coming out of this person's mouth. Wow, you went up fast. What is it? <laughs> uh, two years ago, Lane Kershaw ran, it's a environmental feminism. I don't know if that is like saying like feminism. Yeah, no, 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 totally. Ecofeminism <coughs> really just says, and it goes back to this argument about original feminism, that women are innately attuned to nature. Okay. Like that general assumption, that women are attuned to nature for whatever reasons we believe that to be true, because they have children, because they're more peaceful, that because they have these innate traits, that they are more in tune to help the environment. That's all it really is. Okay. Right, the same reason that you heard last is the answer to this argument. That's just not true for everyone. Yes, there are women more peaceful, there are women more in tune to nature, because they have a womb, whatever. <laughs> but there are women who are not, and we don't even know what a woman is. Right, so that identity itself is never true. <coughs> yeah. Huh? D&G? D&G, uh, that's like a whole bunch of other stuff. <laughs> but the way to look at D&G, has anyone ever heard of D&G? We call it the uh, and I call them Atari. Yeah. They're like the, most annoying people. Uh, mainly because like high school